How's it going guys? It's Ryan here and welcome to this low level Queen Black Dragon Guide for Legacy and EOC. Uh, so this guide will be fully comprehensive and will go through all of the gear, all the best strategies, all of the mechanics, all the types of attacks, and ideally we'll get someone who does not know how to kill this boss or has not killed it very much or has tried and failed uh, and turn them into someone who with a little bit of practice because it will always take practice uh, to someone who can kill this boss very effectively and very well. Uh, ideally as well as they possibly can for the stats and the gear they have. So without further ado, let's jump right into the guide. Hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so some general info about the Queen Black Dragon. Queen Black Dragon is combat level 900, grants 5,000 combat XP per kill with 1,650 constitution XP. Uh, it is weak to Dragon Bane ammunition, so if you have that, uh, definitely be using it. Uh, grants 1,693.5 Slayer experience per kill on a Black Dragon task, and attacks with melee, ranged, as well as fire. In terms of recommendations, I'd recommend you have 70 plus ranged, maged, or attack and strength depending on the combat style you want to use, as well as 70 plus defense. Uh, the level 70 prayers, if you have them unlocked, that's very useful uh, from the King's Ransom quest with the Night Waves, uh, as well as 50 agility like I said earlier for the agility shortcut. Okay, so the requirements for this guide are 60 summoning and the Song from the Depths quest. Uh, the Song from the Depths quest is a very easy quest, it took me about 10 minutes, I just did it on a new account just to make sure it was easy and straightforward, and it actually gives you a constant damage reduction against the Queen Black Dragon's fire attack, so it is so worth doing, uh, you definitely need to do that, and then the 60 summoning is just a straight requirement to enter the boss fight itself. So those are your requirements. Okay, so this is how you are going to get there. Basically, from whatever bank you're at, make sure you've got all your gear. Don't worry, we'll get into that later. And then you're going to teleport the Port Serum Lodestone, and then you're going to run northwest. Uh, then you're going to follow the cave down this way. There is an agility shortcut that I just ran by. If you have level 50 agility, be sure to take that. If you do not, well, you've got quite a run ahead of you, uh, but that's fine for learning how to kill the boss. The run is very self-explanatory. You just you follow the way the cave goes, and you will make it to the start of the fight. Uh, just, you know, be, be wary of the fact that if you do not have the agility level, it will take you a little bit of extra time to get there, uh, which can be very useful if you're trying to make a lot of money here, uh, because it does speed up banking. Especially when you're learning how to do this boss, you won't be getting too many kills a trip, uh, which really adds on the time. But there we are at the summoning portal, uh, ready to fight the Queen Black Dragon. Choosing your combat style. Uh, you're going to want to use the combat style in which you have the highest tiered weapon. Uh, the most important thing in this boss, especially when you're learning, is accuracy bonus, which comes from the tier of the weapon. Uh, that being said, it can be slightly harder to learn with melee, so if your highest tier weapon is melee uh, and you don't doesn't go too well, uh, try out range or magic if it isn't significantly lower and you might have a better chance. Now, in terms of armor, it's the same thing. Use the highest tier armor you have in the correct combat style. Uh, now, for necklaces and rings, obviously they're not tiered, but Amulet of Souls or Reaper Necklace, Blood Necklace, Ceredomen's Necklace, or Amulet of Fury, and then for the rings, it's Ring of Death, a Silent Surgeon's Rings, then, then the Onyx Ring Eye or Sixth Age Circuit, and then the Dagonoth King Rings would be sort of your up and down grade list, but a lot of that is up to, you know, personal preference, and it depends on what you like using. Now, in terms of choosing your combat type, uh, I've highlighted EOC because that is the preferred method. Uh, you do get faster kills, which means you use less food, you use less supplies, and you're less likely to run out of supplies. Uh, it is click intensive. Uh, now, the thing about Legacy that's nice is when you're learning how to kill the boss, uh, it lets you focus more on the mechanics, so that is an advantage to Legacy. Uh, but still, uh, despite being able to take advantage of the Barrow set effects, it's definitely more worthwhile how to learn to kill this boss using EOC. Okay, so the Queen Black Dragon has three main attacks. Melee, which maxes around 2,000 damage. Range, which maxes at around 2,990, as well as a Fire Breath attack. Now, quick note, he, she only uses the melee attack if you're in the front half of the arena in front of the artifact. Okay, now into the special attacks. Uh, I'm going to take a lot of time on this because this is the most important part of the video, so definitely pay attention for this part. Uh, so the first special attack we're going to be looking at is the Flame Wall attack. Okay, so as for most of the Queen Black Dragon's attacks, you are going to get a message in the chat box saying the Queen Black Dragon is going to take a huge breath. First thing you do is put on your anti-dragon shield unless you have super anti-fires. Uh, you got to put on the shield, and then basically what you do is you're going to be standing in one of the natural gaps, so that's going to be not a problem, uh, but sometimes you're going to get a spot where you're not in a gap, and that is not a problem. Uh, you should not run around and find the gap necessarily because it can be tedious. What you want to do is you want to wait until the firewall is just in front of you, and then you can click through it and it will not hit you. Uh, worst case scenario, you'll be hit once by the flame wall, uh, but either you'll get hit once or not at all as long as you're running through it. And you'll see here, uh, one of the flame walls that goes by, I'll get hit once. Uh, that's this one, hit me for 750. 
uh, and then the second one I managed to click through. But that's all you have to do for the flame walls. Uh, you get more of them as the waves get harder. Uh, the later waves, you get more flame walls at a time. Uh, but it's very straightforward. It's very easy. That's all you have to do. Just don't forget to put on your anti-dragon shield or it will not go well for you. Okay, so the next attack we're going to be looking at is the giant worm attack. This is definitely the most simple of attacks and the easiest to avoid. Uh, basically, when you finish a phase of the Queen Black Dragon, an artifact will glow. Uh, depending on what phase you're ending, I'll talk about that a little later. You need to click on this artifact as soon as possible because the Queen Black Dragon will spit out a Grot Worm, as you see on screen. Uh, there's a Grot Worm there because of how long I took. If you wait too long, you'll get three, four, five, six Grot Worms, and they hit quite hard. They attack you with magic. Uh, so basically, all you have to do is be mindful of which artifact is going to glow next. Uh, I'll talk about that later, like I said, when I go through some full kills, and click on it as soon as possible. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the dreaded Tortured Souls. This is the attack that I find kills the most people, but it's also the easiest attack to avoid. Just takes a little practice, and this is where the practice makes perfect thing happens. You will see a message in your chat box saying the Queen Black Dragon summons one of her captured Tortured Souls. What you want to do is you want to wait one game tick, and then you just want to run to the west, and the attack will hit the soul instead of hitting you. Uh, it's the same thing whether you're dealing with one soul, two souls, or four souls. As you can see, pops up. And then, boom, there you go. You just wait for the soul to pop up to the west of you, and then you just click through it one tick later. In phase two, you get one soul, and in phase three, you get two souls. In phase four, you get four souls, but it's effectively the same thing regardless of how many souls uh, you have. The only thing is, in phase four, obviously, if you mess it up, you will be hit four times at a time, so you can get combat out very well. Other thing is, in the fourth phase, what you want to do is you can't click to the west because of how they appear, uh, but you'll see that in just a second, you need to click uh, northwest or southwest. Uh, and as you can see, no attacks hit me. Uh, now the other thing is, in sometimes in phase 4, the souls can spawn in really random spots, especially if you're too close to the sidelines, and especially if you're doing a melee kill. If this happens, it's just about thinking on your feet and running around, and maybe you get hit once or twice, but the goal is just to avoid getting hit all four times. So uh, you can just run away and then run back through the souls later, and uh, that way you'll avoid some damage. Okay, last but definitely not least, we have the super sneeze. This attack, all you have to do is when you see the message in the chat box, you have to instantly put on your anti-dragon shield or it will be very, very bad for your life. Uh, you got to put that on right away. And the other thing is you need to stand on towards the sides of the arena. This is especially important when you're doing a melee kill because if you're doing a ranged kill, you should just be on the side anyway. Uh, but you put on your shield and you tank it. There's no way to dodge the 750s, but if you're standing in the middle of the arena, you get hit a lot more than 750. And if you're not anti-fired uh, with the shield, uh, and you're standing in the middle, you're gonna die. There's no way about it, and I'll show you guys that a little bit later as well, me dying to it. Okay, so now into the three main other mechanics. Uh, we're gonna start off with the crystal colors. Basically what happens is, in some of the later phases, the Queen Black Dragon can change colors. As you can see there, there's a message in the chat box saying the Queen Black Dragon hardens her carapace. She's more resistant to physical damage, but more vulnerable to magic. What does that mean? That basically means you're gonna have a harder time hitting on the Queen Black Dragon if you're using melee and ranged, uh, but if you're using magic, you'll hit very well. And then as you can see, by the end of the phase, Queen Black Dragon turned blue. That means if you're using melee or range, you hit harder. It's not really something that's gonna make or break your kill, uh, but it's something to be aware of, and that's why some people bring a switch as well. Okay, now for the least harmful mechanic of the Queen Black Dragons, the Soul Siphon. Basically, you see a message in the chat box, and the Queen Black Dragon will start siphoning the tortured soul's hit points into her own. Basically, if you can, just give the soul a little love tap, uh, just to finish off the HP so that the Queen Black Dragon doesn't siphon. Uh, otherwise, just keep DPSing the Queen Black Dragon as normal. Just, if you're wondering why the Queen Black Dragon's healing, that's probably why. And now lastly, the dreaded time stop. This only occurs in the fourth phase. Basically, you need to look at your minimap and look at the far right and left corners of the screen. If a soul pops up and starts talking about time being short, it is your number one priority to kill it, because if not, you'll get your screen frozen for 20 seconds. Now that does not freeze the people attacking you, it just freezes you, meaning you cannot eat, uh, and it is a great way to die. So yeah, try and avoid that one if you can. Alrighty guys, don't mind the awkward face cam on this one, this is from a stream a very long time ago, uh, but this is just me showcasing a QBD kill that I did on a stream just for fun. Uh, this is me killing the Queen Black Dragon wearing full iron uh, with dual wielded iron longsword, so I call it the Iron Man challenge. Uh, but just to say, if you know all the mechanics and you're good at dodging the attacks, uh, you can kill this boss without good gear. You do not need the best gear, you don't even need gear as good as what I'm using later on in this guide when I'm showcasing kills. Uh, so yeah, that's just to say that. Obviously, the kill did take me quite a long time. It took me like eight minutes, uh, but I did manage to get the kill done, uh, and that's without just filling my whole invent with brews as well. Uh, so that's just to say that it is it is possible, it is doable, it just isn't the easiest thing in the world. Uh, so yeah, anyway guys, I just wanted to showcase that real quick before I commentate some full kills, one with melee and one with range. So now it's time to put together everything we've talked about earlier in this video. Uh, so once you enter the lair, you're going to make sure that you put on your correct prayers. That would be for melee kill, piety, protect from range, and protect item. You're going to drink all of your combat boosting potions, you're going to drink a normal anti-fire potion, and you're going to put on your aura. 
Now you're just going to attack the Queen Black Dragon as normal and just watch out for the attack. So as you can see, that was a flame wall. So what I did is I put on the shield, I run back, and then I run back forward through the flame wall. Now you guys will see in a minute, I actually didn't get this kill. Uh, I got a bunch of other ones, but I just wanted to put this one in for exactly that reason, and I'll talk about that when it happens. But as you can see, as soon as phase one is about to done, the artifact in the middle will glow. You touch it as soon as possible, and as you can see, one Grot Worm spawn, only one that is just fine. Uh, you just don't want to have like 20 attacking you by the third phase. Uh, so same thing, a soul comes and you dodge it just like you know how to do. Uh, other thing is, Hurricane is very nice if you're doing a melee kill because it also takes care of the souls because some people, especially at lower levels, can find that you're getting hit by the souls and it can be kind of annoying. Uh, now, in terms of gear, I'm wearing full bandos. I'm using a Ceridome and Godsword, just so you guys know. Uh, so not the minimum gear you could do it easily with a barrow set as well uh, and a ceridome and sword not a god sword for significantly cheaper uh, but this was just a suggested gear that i set up and tried out and actually went very very well uh, so as you can see you get more flame walls as the waves progress but it's still quite easy and i haven't used a single food going into phase four so i'm thinking i'm smooth sail and this is going to be perfect for the guide and look what happens. Uh, you will see sometimes, sometimes in phase four, it can be an absolute mess. Sometimes you just get spammed with attacks. They will drain your food. And if this happens to you, do not be discouraged. Uh, just know that it happens sometimes and there's not much you can do about it. Just every so often, every once in a blue moon, you will get a very unlucky phase four. Uh, and you'll just get comboed out because she'll keep spamming souls and she'll keep spamming super hot flames. And all of a sudden, you're dead. Uh, so that's just to say, and the next kill obviously will be a successful one that I show, uh, but that's just to say you can have the best kill ever and then it can fall apart in phase four. Just keep practicing and it will be fine. You probably just got unlucky. All right, so now let's walk you guys through one entire full ranged kill. I also sped this one up a bit just like the last one, but not so much that you can't understand what's happening. Uh, for this one, make sure your aura is on. I would strongly recommend Sharpshooter if you're ranging or um, Runic Accuracy if you're using magic just because it helps a lot. Drink your stat boosting potions, drink your anti-fire, and then you're going to stand where I'm standing right there next to the artifact because that is one of the natural gaps in the flame wall. So it just makes life easy to stand there for the first three phases. Now you just go through your ability rotation as normal uh, and just be mindful of the special attacks when they come. And that's about it. That's all you have to do. It's just about watching out for the special attacks because the normal attacks will not kill you. So you may want to keep your HP a little bit higher than what I've done. Uh, I just know how hard the attacks hit, so I know that I'm not going to get combat out from the HP levels that I'm on. That being said, if you're learning, it is a great thing to just stay around 6,000 HP plus just in case. And as you'll see, like in phase three and phase four especially, the higher your HP is, the better, because that means if you mess up on a soul dodge or a super hot flames, there's a chance that you don't die. So as you can see there, phase one ended. I clicked on the artifact. If you're fast enough in a range kill, you actually will not get a single Grot Worm spawn, which is really nice. Uh, now, second phase, uh, the other artifact will glow. They always glow in the same order. So the bottom left one will glow, and then after phase three, the bottom right one will glow, and then you do phase four, and then the bottom center one will glow. Other thing is you have to stay off the platform at the back. Uh, if you stand on there for too long, you'll be hit for 1,500 damage rapidly. So just run to the artifact and run back and don't dawdle on there as well. Uh, other thing you can do is use Surge, but that's more of an advanced tactic, and for most people, it's not worth worrying about. Uh, but as you can see, it's the same thing. When the hot flames come, you put on the shield. When the normal firewalls come, you put on the shield. And that is about it. That's all you have to do. That's your QBD kill. Uh, all it will do is it will take a little bit of practice, and that is all. There's a scythe in there, the Queen Black Dragon changed colors. Just stuff to be mindful of, but not a big deal at all. Smooth sailing, the kill is done. Uh, for both of those kills, or I guess the first one wasn't really a kill, my familiar wasn't used at all. I, I took a Spirit Terror Bird, but I didn't have to use it at all. Uh, and it's smooth sailing, so then you grab the loot, and you're good to go. Okay, so now, why the heck are you killing this boss? Why do you want to kill the QBD? Well, your answer is probably because you need the drops, you want the money. Uh, this is one of the best money makers in the entire game uh, at higher levels with higher stats, with better gear, with more practice. Uh, you can make well upwards of five mil an hour at this boss. Uh, and even when learning the money is great, it totally overpays for your supplies. Uh, so you can get Royal Crossbow pieces, Dragon Kite Shields, Dragon Bone Upgrade Kits, which are kind of troll drops, Queen Black Dragon Scale, which is for the QBD pet, uh, as well as the Draconic Visage, uh, and as well as lots of consistent drops. The consistency from this boss is the best part about it. You get Dragon Bones and Royal Dragon Hide every single kill, and every third kill you're gonna get brews as well which are very very worthwhile uh, as well as the normal average drops are things like ores and herbs and are very valuable as well uh, so this is really a great boss a great starter boss as well if you're starting to get into QBD uh, sorry if you're starting to get into PVM uh, so I would strongly recommend it for that reason 
Anyway, guys, that's about it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully you learned some stuff. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions at all, let me know via social media or in the comments below. I read every single comment and I respond to them as soon as I possibly can. You know, give me a day, maybe two. Uh, and that's perfect. I will get back to you if you have questions about what gear you should use or with what your specific stats are. I will absolutely take a look at it and help you guys out. Uh, so anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good one. Uh, if you'd like to check out any of my other stuff, uh, you can just click on the screen there. I've probably got links to some other series. And peace out. That's it for me.